32. So the Dutchman, with the win, now advanced to 29-1 and one on the season. And Albany has its season end with a final record of 18 wins and 10 defeats. And uh, right now, uh, we will get together and have a few comments uh, with uh, Coach Dusha. Ryan, uh, a good performance tonight. Uh, a battle in the first half. Albany came out, uh, really showed a lot of energy. Uh, they, they proved uh, tonight that uh, they were not going to be going away anytime soon. Uh, what was your mindset and what was the coach's mindset at halftime when you were up by just four points? Yeah, I, I thought we were in a good position. I didn't think we played particularly well in the first, in the first half, uh, but we were still up four. And so in March, you just got to grind possessions out. And so I thought that we were, we were decent in the first half. And that's what good teams do. Good teams find a way, even if we're not playing the best, to, to make it a manageable halftime um, margin. And, and I really like the way that we came out in the second half. But the first half, we weren't bad. It was just sometimes the first half of games, just getting your emotions in check and getting, getting used to the flow of the game. And I thought Albany had a great defensive strategy. Um, and they played really well. Yeah, what were you seeing uh, from Albany defensively to, you know, especially neutralize Scott's, uh, Scotty Stone because I know uh, Scotty kind of lit it up in the second half, but really it was another one of his senior backcourt mates, uh, Isaac Sawyer, that led the way in the first half. Isaac did a great job. You know, teams are going to try to take Scotty away, especially early. And, and when that happens, other guys got to step up. And Isaac's done it all year, and he did it again tonight. Uh, and so it, it was really fun to see him. And, but that's why you have seniors. That's why I have, I have a bunch of guys. And that's why uh, we have the kind of record we do is because we have more than one guy doing stuff. Um, and, and so and that goes for any of our guys. If any of our guys are off or any of our guys aren't shooting well, it's the other guy's job to pick it up. And so I was really pleased with that. Ryan, was there a certain point in tonight's game where you felt your guys were settled down? Uh, you know, I'm sure the, the uh, nervousness uh, was, was a little bit up for both Albany and Melrose coming in, but was, was there a certain point in tonight's game, whether it be first half or later on, that you felt, hey, we're just playing basketball now? Yeah, I think it was in the second half, pretty early on in the second half, which was good. Probably about, uh, probably about you know, four minutes into the second half, I thought, all right, this is our flow. This is the way that we normally go about doing things. And so it was fun for us to, to see us kind of getting back to that style of basketball. And so sometimes that takes that long um, um, but when we play like that we need to make sure we capitalize on it and I think we did a good job of that we are visiting right now with the head coach of the Melrose Dutchman boys basketball team Ryan Dusha who joins us upstairs here at Sexton Arena following an 80 to 58 win Melrose with the victory is now on to the uh, section championship one thing I'd like to observe Ryan I, I really thought your team defensively rebounded the basketball outstanding it seemed like Albany was missing shot after shot after shot in the second half and uh, maybe that fueled your transition game a little bit but uh, what can you say about your team's ability to de rebound defensively to start that second half yeah we lived and died on it all year yeah we, we've been only one game have we been out rebounded all year uh, we were plus 10 in the first half of rebounding. I'm not sure where we were in the second half, but I bet you it was pretty high again. And, and that puts a lot of pressure on the defense. If the defense knows it's probably just going to get one shot. It puts a lot of pressure on the shooters. Uh, conversely, if, if they know that, that they're going to get a second and third and fourth shot, they're more confident shooters. So we want to try to limit them to one shot and done against any team. Uh, so I was really, really pleased with that because we're a good defensive team. I don't think we're a great defensive team, but we're pretty good. But when we rebound, we're, uh, we're a lot better. How do you feel about, uh, you know, uh, your, your team offensively? You know, it seems like uh, people use the name Melrose and automatically they're going to think so Scotty Stone at least this year. But, uh, you know, I've seen your team play three or four times this winter, and uh, I really like the way the balanced attack that your, your, your guys come to the gymnasium with, that it is not just a one-man game. No, it's not. And I think uh, the biggest reason for that is these guys have played together since they've been in fourth grade. And so they kind of understand who's getting the shots, what their roles are, and and they like to share the basketball. And these guys are really, really good friends off the floor, and it makes a difference. It makes an absolute difference on the floor. Any coach will tell you that. When they trust each other, when they like each other, they, they can be intense, and they can know what each other's strengths are and play to each other's strengths. And so it, um, it's, just, it's just a fun group. And they, they like it when other people have success. And there's some teams that they don't have that. They kind of get jealous when other guys get shots. Uh, these guys are just special. And, and um, to have that in high school basketball is really neat. Ryan, from a court level, what was this atmosphere like? You know, I, I thought it was the electric, you know, the Albany fans were completely engaged. The Dutchman fans were completely engaged. Your students were dressed in black, uh, you know, along the baseline and everything like that. I, I don't think uh, the environment could get a whole lot better. No, this is what March should be. And you got Albany, Melrose. I mean, how many people knew each other on the court, off the court, in the stands, related, worked together, uh, a lot of connections. And that's what makes it fun. That's what makes small town high school basketball fun because there's all those little connections 
instructions and there's so much respect for the players on the floor too and so that was pretty evident that all of our guys and all their their guys had a tremendous amount of respect for each other and that just adds to, to the ambiance of it as, as coaches we I mean you can tell it's intense but we honestly when things get going you just kind of zoned in on what happens and you don't realize how big the crowd is but it was a wonderful crowd and that's the way it should be in March. I know you've probably talked to Nobby uh, quite frequently during the winter but is it still a little bit unusual to think that Albany's not a conference foe anymore? It, it's totally weird. It's completely weird. We played them the first game of the year and we went to play them unless we played them now and what's really weird next year is they move up to 3A so now not only are they in our conference uh, not in our conference or not in our section and you know it was weird when when we played um, Long Prairie here on Saturday and uh, Sox Center played Albany you have Long Prairie, Melrose, Albany, Sox Center that's three different conferences from that kind of core and so it's too bad that we that uh, that all went down like that but um, you know at least we still get to play each other. Is there a benefit Ryan uh, now Litchfield and New London Spicer will be starting in about 25 minutes is that a benefit for you as a winning coach to have the early game rather than the late game? Well, on yeah, there's pros and cons both ways. Okay. I think de the definite pro now is we get to sit back and relax and scout the entire game and watch what other team's doing. If you play second, you kind of have to go tape and, and kind of check on the guys. You can't get a full scout in because you're really focused on your game. So I think there is a little bit of an advantage of, of um, playing first. Um, of course, it makes it a lot better when you win. I know that uh, Litchfield and New London Spicer, I believe, came up back-to-back -back on the Dutchman's schedule. I think the Wildcats were first. What do you recall about the win against New London Spicer back in December? Yeah, I think we got out to a really nice lead, and we had a really nice pace, and they made some shots towards the end. I think we were up almost by 35, and they cut it down to almost 20, and so they went on a huge run in the second half. So it was kind of an up-and-down game, um, and they can shoot, and they can score, and they've got guards that are good. And so it'll be a fun matchup tonight against uh, Litchfield and New London. Meanwhile, Litchfield uh, came up the, the Friday before Christmas. I understand a, an exciting game, uh, the only loss on the Dutchman's schedule in overtime. Uh, what do you recall about that game? Uh, that was a playoff atmosphere. That was, that was a March game in December, and so that was great for our guys. We learned so much about ourselves after that game, um, and that was a fun atmosphere. Those are the type of games that you really get up for, and we lost in overtime, but it made us better. You know, win or lose, it made us better. Yeah, and, and uh, I think that night, uh, you know, Scotty Stone had 14 points. Your team had 59, which led me to believe that, uh, you know, I kind of got the note at that time that uh, you, you've, you've got a, a lot of complimentary players that really make this a good team. Absolutely. And, you know, there's no way that you have the record that we do without a three, four, five, six, seven different guys stepping up. And the other part about it, too, is that, you know, the, the guys that don't get in, um, they do an ab absolutely excellent job in practice. They didn't, haven't got the playing time, but they are working hard. And for, for March here, we've kind of gotten to a scout team, and our scout team guys, it's kind of a thankless job because they just run the other team's stuff. Um, but they do a great job of preparing this. So this really is a team because everybody, 1 through 19 on our roster, uh, kind of knows their role, and, and they're all excited to be here. So th that's, you don't have this type of team um, or this type of record without that type of team feel. I, I know that uh, you'll formulate more of a game plan uh, once you get through uh, viewing tonight's game, but uh, ultimately Friday night, uh, you know what uh, your team can come to the gymnasium with. What has to happen to keep this season moving we on? We got a garden. We got a garden rebound. We'll worry about offense. We'll get shots, you know, but you got to be able to grind out in March. It's not going to be in the 90s or the 80s. You got to be able to grind out each possession. So if we defend and if we guard and rebound, you'll have a shot. I'm not going to ask you for a prediction. That would be unfair for me, but I know whoever comes out of this next game here is going to be a quality opponent. Uh, uh, Ryan, we appreciate the chance to visit with you. Thanks so much for coming upstairs, and congratulations on the subsection championship. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's the uh, head coach of the... Uh Melrose Dutchman boys basketball team Ryan Dusha joining us for a couple of moments. Our, our thanks to Coach Dusha for being with us. Again, Melrose gets the win to claim the North Subsection 6AA Boys Basketball Championship, 80-58, to the uh, final score. Melrose is on to the section final on Friday night to uh, play at approximately 8 o'clock at Hallenbeck Hall on the campus of St. Cloud State University.